India is building the largest facial recognition tech system in the world. It's being rapidly deployed in ways that are illegal to say the least. And our team of experts is raising an alarm, saying that the way this is happening right now may end badly, but not enough people know what's really going on. So let's dive right into it. There are two main reasons why facial recognition is used in India. First, there's a program in the works where data on faces of Indian citizens from all states is put into one single database and used alongside the information the government already has on you by the police. Now, we're worried because when you become easily identifiable no matter where you go because of information that you really have no choice but to give, that is by definition mass surveillance in action. Many police departments already have FRT systems in place. Secondly, the central and state governments want to use facial recognition to automatically verify your identity in schools, airports, polling stations and eventually everywhere we imagine. This is already happening in several places in the country. So why are we worried? The most glaring issue is that we have neither a law on facial recognition nor a law that generally protects our data. So it's kind of a free fall for all where technically anyone can gain access to your facial recognition data or put facial recognition in your neighborhood or just use it for shady purposes. A legislation brings about the most basic sense of accountability but we're currently functioning without it. In many instances, people's images are being used without consent and we believe that one instance even is one too many. Secondly, our tech itself is just not good enough. Simply speaking, AI maps several little points on your face and saves those points as data. This data is then matched with other pictures and videos to locate your identity. India's facial recognition systems are below average and even our courts have recognized this. This can lead to issues like false positives, where the tech says that you're someone that you're actually not. So tomorrow it may label you as a criminal even though you're not. Research shows that this happens quite frequently and most frequently to women, children and people with marginalized identities. It can also lead to false negatives where it fails to identify who you are. Now imagine in the future you are dependent on facial recognition for everything from your government essentials like ration to getting onto a plane ride and if it gives you a false negative you won't be identified and you won't be able to access resources. On to the next one. Today, the government may say, we're using facial recognition tech only in very specific cases for very specific crimes. But tomorrow, you look and it's everywhere. This is something called function creep, where a tool is deployed for a certain function, but its use starts creeping into other functions. And we believe that this will happen in India because I want to emphasize that this is not just a hypothetical. We see this happening with every other new technology. Lastly, the weird thing about technology, as always, is that it can make our lives exponentially better, but it can also threaten to shake the foundation of our constitutionally guaranteed rights. Think of facial recognition tech this way. You have the right to free speech, but you'll definitely be self-censoring around FRT. You have the right to peaceful assembly and your right to privacy. Well, too bad you'll be monitored at protests now, sometimes without your consent. You have the right to free movement, but you'll definitely be avoiding places where facial recognition tech is deployed. So how can we in good conscience accept a surveillance system that is so incompatible with our own constitution? Are you beginning to see the problem? If facial recognition tech is inaccurate, it will lead to bad consequences for the people it's being used on. But if it is accurate, it will turn us all into a surveillance nation. There's no winning here. So what can you do? I promise you that you're going to be seeing a lot more facial recognition tech systems crop up everywhere in the near future. So now whenever you come across one, just ask yourself one question. Is its use within the existence of a law? Is its use necessary and proportional to the situation? And are there some procedural safeguards to ensure that the state isn't abusing it? If you don't check those boxes, then congratulations, you have successfully identified a situation where your fundamental right to privacy is being impinged on in a matter that is illegal. So what you can do in this case is A, please raise awareness about it within your circles and B, please report it to us because at IFF, we run a facial recognition systems tracker that monitors every system in the country that we've ever come across and we are finding more and more every single day. 
we file a lot of RTIs demanding information from the government, which is why we know of so many illegal trackers that we have right now. And we release this information for your knowledge and we ask, you know, the government and public authorities very critical questions and are always demanding accountability. In short, we don't just have a finger on the pulse of facial recognition systems in India, but also on how they are leading to the consistent dwindling of your rights. So we can say with some confidence that the issues that I speak about today are more urgent than ever in India. You can become a part of the mission. A, you can sign our petition calling for a ban of facial recognition technology systems in India. And B, you can co-own this tracker with us. You just have to become a member at Internet Freedom Foundation, make a donation and join us in this fight to bring a halt to facial recognition technology in India.